All right, who's ready to talk about the Super Bowl? So, yeah, you all know what I'm talking about. It was the big football game, had a bunch of trailers show on it. And, uh, yeah, I'm actually not going to say what the name of it is because I, I don't know how bad um, the NFL is about hunting down people on things like YouTube. But I do know they are notorious trademark hounds with anyone that they feel is proper, uh, you know, making some profit off the name of that game. So, yeah, just because I've had enough of a headache with very spurious copyright claims lately. Uh, I'm just not going to risk it. And so I'll just talk about the trailers because there were a fair number of them. And uh, in case anyone was asking, uh, no, <laughs> I didn't watch the game. I actually uh, didn't find out who won um, and except by proxy uh, about, I don't know, tw almost 24 hours later. Um, but in any case, let's talk about the trailers, because there were a fair number of them, and a fair number of them were about the kinds of stuff that I like to talk about. I'm not going to cover every single trailer. I think I am going to cover almost every trailer. Like, I think the only one I'm not going to talk about is the Handmaiden Season 3 trailer, just because I haven't gotten around to seeing that show yet. So, as far as what is on there, um, these are going to be in no particular order, um, except that I am going to save my favorite trailer for the last thing that I talk about. But prior to that, I'm just going to talk about them as I remember them or as I, you know, check my notes if I need to do that. Um, so, first up, we had actually several mini trailers for Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. Now, this was something that, like, the name seemed vaguely familiar to me. And the trailers were, um, were interesting. I, I'm, my assumption, and I didn't look more carefully into this, I could have, I didn't, uh, is that this is gonna be kind of an anthology horror thing, um, which is presumably why they did the four mini trailers, to help give that impression, as opposed to, um, you know, misleading people into thinking it was, like, some grander story when it's not. Uh, it was also interesting that it went back and forth, because out of these four mini trailers, half of them mentioned Guillermo del Toro, who I think is producing this, uh, and half mentioned that it was based off a hit book. And actually, when it said that, I did stop and check that. I think I actually read some of these stories when I was in grade school. I'm pretty sure they were in the school library. I can't, I can't be sure. Like, I read more than a little bit of uh, sort of collections of macabre stories for younger readers when I was a kid because I could. Why not? Um, so I feel like I probably read some of these. I couldn't be certain, though. Um, getting off that and actually talking about the trailers, they're quick, they're punchy, they get the job done. Um, given that the book series is for younger readers, I'm going to assume this is probably going to end up PG-13. Um pretty legit for some of it though like the one that got me um did actually kind of get me to go ah, is this girl's checking out like this bump on her cheek and there's like it looks like a hair sticking out black hair and then like she looks at it and it twitches and you realize it's like an insect like that may be ski because that's a bit of a hot the, like the idea of stuff crawling under your skin ah, ha like ah it's not it's not like a it's not like a gut level, like a phobia level fear, but oh god, that creeps me out. So, I mean, pretty effective uh, as far as that goes. It's, I mean, the whole idea of this movie is now on my radar way more than it was before, so I guess that uh, that counts as an accomplishment. We had a couple trailers from Marvel. There was Avengers Endgame, which, you know, we didn't get much more plot for the stuff we already knew about because, well, you've only got 30 seconds, so best to convey mood rather than plot. It was interesting to contrast this with the trailer that's already hit, because the trailer that hit was a bit more sort of mournful, a bit more, you know, in the wake of disaster, whereas this one felt a bit more defiant and a little bit more, okay, we do not accept this. And I liked that feel, and it, I think it was also a good thing because I think hammering on the melancholy of that first trailer, which I think was perfect for that first trailer, continuing to hammer on that trailer after trailer would actually burn people out and have everybody go like, oh God, is it just going to be depressing? Like, no, 
we're fighting back now. Now, if I was the kind of person to go through frame by frame and really parse out and think, what what can I guess is going to happen in the, in the movie based off these images? I probably could, but I'm also just not that guy. It was a cool trailer. I liked it. The Captain Marvel trailer, this annoyed me. I actually think it's the best Captain Marvel trailer we've had so far. And it was 30 seconds long. Yeah, that kind of irritates me. It just felt like it had a much cleaner focus, you know, with the with the recurring sort of mantra, um, you know, about being better, faster, stronger, and 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 all of that. And you know, I and I like kind of the double meaning that's involved in that because it it sort of first gets said by um, Carol Danvers as a pilot, and that makes sense as a you know, just being in the military and striving to be the best at your job that you can be, to be better, to be faster, to be stronger, to do, just do that. Um, but then to have that, like, sort of filter in over to her role as a soldier in the Kree Empire and the idea of pushing her as a hero. Um, and yes, if you want to um, layer in the, just the idea of, it's a, of you know, pushing a, a woman, pushing to be those things because she has to, she has to rise to the occasion because she's going to be scrutinized more. You could add that layer to it as well. I'm sure the marketing people knew that was in the mix but it was it was to the point the images were solid the build on the trailer was good i really liked it and i've actually i like i know some people have been harsh on the captain marvel trailers i've liked them i liked this better than the ones i already liked which as i said kind of annoys me because i'm like why couldn't you come out with something this good uh up to this point what else was the, oh alita uh, had a new trailer which looked Fine. I know I, I early critical word on this thing is mixed, which makes me nervous. I'm going to see it regardless because I've been waiting for this movie since I was in college. Like seriously, that's when I found out James Cameron had snagged the um, the rights to make the movie. And this was before he started working on Avatar. So I have been waiting for this movie for a long time. I don't like I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm going to see it no matter what. And the trailer was fine. Uh, oh, Hobbs and Shaw. All right. Uh, <laughs> confession time. I have yet to see a Fast and the Furious movie. Like, any of them. Like, I, I'd like, that's not like, I'm too good for these movies. But, like, when the series first started, I saw it and like, that looks dumb and I have no interest. Now, as they've gotten more recent, I have been going, that looks dumb and, like, I might have an, an awful lot of fun with it. I just haven't actually gotten to i i had wanted to see the eighth one in the theater because i figured why the heck not um i i don't feel like i need deep lore to get into the series but i i didn't catch it and so here we are but i i do like the feel and the vibe off this i i feel like we haven't had this kind of antagonizing buddy you know action comedy in a while it was really kind of the bread and butter for hollywood for uh for a chunk of time there and it's really kind of faded we get it sporadically like now and then like i would say the nice guys was kind of a buddy uh you know action buddy cop kind of thing but this like feels but i mean that was also low budget that was shane black working basically independent and um, whereas this is like this has the kind of money thrown at it that things like lethal weapon 3 had thrown at it back in the day so uh it's kind of i i'm I kind of like seeing something like this having that much money thrown at it again. And I like the contrast between um, Dwayne Johnson and Jason Statham. I feel like they bounce off each other well and the contrast is good, but like in a way that's like, I want to see these guys share scenes. Yeah, I whether or not I'll rush out to see this, I don't know. I, I mean, like really, it depends on what I'm up to when it's in the theater as to whether or not I will carve out time for it. Um, not, uh, and if I don't get to it, it's not because I decided I didn't want to see it. It'll just be because I had other stuff going on. Like the, the number of films that I'll actually like... I will force myself to find time. It's it, my interest isn't that high, but I hope I catch it. And like I said, I had hoped I I would have caught the eighth Fast and Furious, and I missed that. So hopefully I won't miss this, and we'll see if it's finally my hook into this franchise. Couple left to go. Toy Story four. <laughs> it, fine. Like I I've just I there's nothing about the concept the pitch the title the trails we've had up to this point gives me any enthusiasm you know i don't even think toy story 3 is the best toy story movie but it was the way to end 
it was an ending. It was definitively an ending. Like, I don't... Nothing that I'm seeing makes me think it's worth it. You know, to bring these characters back and to remove the closure. You know, and you can say, well, that was just the ending of that story. And here's the start of another one. I'm like, okay, but the only way I'm going to swallow that is if you tell me a really good news story. And, you know, not that I expected the Super Game trailer to turn me around uh, on something I was already skeptical of. But, you know, it's just one more bit of marketing that I'm like, yeah, I'm still not convinced. So let's get to my... Uh, <laughs> My favorite trailer of this whole thing. The Twilight Zone trailer. I love everything about this thing. I would actually be really curious to know, if anyone was actually watching the game uh, as it aired, uh, did people think for like a hot second that the that like the feed had gone wonky before you realized it, it was a trailer? Um, I hope so. Because I like the way that it was cut together and I feel like it it kept the charade up like just long enough um where if, if they'd done it any longer people would have been genuinely ticked off if they'd done it any shorter it wouldn't have like sunk in what might have been happening um and then you know just that that empty field and jordan peele walking up and that door and the mute now like there's I think this is an absolutely perfect trailer for now and not just in a vacuum in context because the the notion of reviving the twilight zone when i first heard that they were going to do that i'm like really are you sure that's a good idea because like look the twilight zone was a seminal show insanely influential both as a general concept and specific stories that appeared in it incredibly influential and also very quickly copied i mean it wasn't that much longer that The Outer Limits came out, and then, you know, all sorts of things since then have aped it to one degree or another. And these days, we are not lacking for horror-ish, sci-fi-ish, you know, kind of dark anthology shows. I mean, we've got Black Mirror. We've got Inside Number 9. I mean, if you, if, it's not an anthology episode by episode, but we've got American Horror Story. You know, what is it that the Twilight Zone can bring to the table that we don't already have? Well, I think there's one thing it can bring to the table, and it's the thing that they missed. It was the key ingredient that they either missed or got wrong the last two times they tried to revive this show. And that is the host. Because think back on The Twilight Zone, if you've actually watched it. A big part of the unique feel of that was Rod Serling introing and outroing every episode that gave it a very distinct flavor much more so than the individual stories being told were because a lot of the stories if you looked at them in isolation without the intro and outro they could have been twilight zone could have been outer limits but you put him back in it it is you becomes uniquely twilight zone now when they tried to revive the show in 85 i don't think they even had a host at all and then they tried to revive it in 2002 they had forrest whitaker and I like Forrest Whitaker a lot. That wasn't a good fit, though, because Forrest Whitaker, you know, he's got his kind of a, his slouchy look, and they had him dressed kind of casually, and he just, he just looked like a guy on the street. What was great about Rod Serling's intro in the, in that original series was that, you know, he was buttoned down, he had his suit, he had his tie. He sounded very authoritative. He sounded like maybe someone who had properly documented this and was going to educate you about the thing you're about to see. And yet, oftentimes, he felt like he came, he felt out of place. Like, we're in this setting, then all of a sudden, there's this dude in a suit. Where'd he come from? What's he doing there? He simultaneously felt like an authority on what you were watching, yet like he didn't belong there. And I feel like what we see of Jordan Peele in this captures that perfectly, from the look, to the demeanor, to the line delivery, without ever sounding like he's trying to do a Rod Serling impression. This feels genuine to Jordan Peele, yet exactly slots into what Rod Serling was for that show. And if they can nail that and just not screw up the stories, it could be a truly worthy revival. Because I do think that that is the missing ingredient that caused the previous revivals of the Twilight Zone to 
just kind of come and go, and when people think the Twilight Zone, they never think 85, 2002. Maybe they will think this new one. We'll see. That was a great trailer. So those are my thoughts on sort of the little rush of trailers we got associated with the big game. Um which happens every single year. So, what were your thoughts on these trailers? Were there any that I missed, uh, aside from the uh, handmade one? Any commercials you liked? Because I didn't go back and review the commercials. I just stuck to the trailers. Or, uh, you know, whatever your thoughts are about any of it. Drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. A whole bunch of stuff to do down there, because there's buttons and links. There's one to the Patreon. And that uh, is greatly appreciated. I recently restructured the Patreon rewards, so the uh, the tier to actually get your name in the end credits coming up in a few minutes is lower than it previously was, so maybe consider checking that out. Um, but even if you don't want to, there's other links to look at, and even if you don't want to look at those, that is okay too, because at the end of the day, folks, you are the council, and I, I just run the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned.